It's a small town mystery so gruesome it gripped the entire state. A dedicated pastor's mutilated body found in the sanctuary of her church. And Nine investigates why. Nine years later, the case remains unsolved. New tonight, our Lisa Monahan gives us a first look at the evidence. She was here to minister to the people. The Christ Holy Sanctified Church seemed like the perfect place for Carol Daniels to minister to lost souls. There were no regular services. Still, Reverend Daniels would make the 60-mile drive from Oklahoma City every Sunday, eager to serve and hopefully save. But on August 23, 2009, Retired Bishop Silky Wilson Jr. knew something wasn't right. We couldn't get no attention. Nobody would come to the door. An officer arrived, looked in through the open side door, and immediately called for backup. The inflection in his voice, I, mean, I knew something was wrong. And a Darko detective, James Howard, is still haunted by the sight of Pastor Daniel's brutalized body behind the pulpit. In your mind, you think, well, how could, how could anybody do this to another person, much less, you know, someone that's down there serving God. Daniels had been stabbed multiple times, her head nearly severed, her hair set on fire, and her nude body posed, some say, as if on a crucifix. There's several theories uh, involved. District Attorney Jason Hicks says investigators eventually agreed it was a foiled robbery where the suspects, likely looking for drug money, took something more valuable, forensic evidence. Her clothes have never been recovered. The murder no. weapon has never been recovered. No. Investigators say only this never before aired surveillance video seems to provide evidence of something suspicious, a blurry figure wearing all white and plenty of potential witnesses. You would hear the scuttlebutt around town that we know who did this and we know it was these two people. The two in question were violent drug dealers. People were simply too afraid to come forward. Finally, in 2015, a woman offered a potential break. She actually witnessed suspect number two with black blouse, a knife that had blood on it. Hicks says the woman claimed the evidence had been burned in this shed. But not only did a search come up empty, the woman died a few days later. Investigators pressed the suspects. Did you participate in the killing of Daniels? No. Neither confessed. And in 2017, the multi-county grand jury took up the case. But then another setback. The main suspect, Denise Darnell Cooper, died of cancer before grand jurors could hear her testimony. I knew what it meant. We would not have an indictment, and it meant most likely uh, we were going to have to find another avenue if we wanted to prosecute uh, suspect number two. Other possible witnesses well, were Pastor called, Carol Daniels was 61. Mahan, she was born October 26, 1947, and, all those and she departed Daniels this cruel world on August 23, 2009. Um, Pastor Carol Daniels was murdered in her church. Um, she had it's a church solved. called the Christ My Holy Sanctified Church. It was in an I'm old honest. building. Um, in Anadarko, Oklahoma. But it's funny because Pastor Carol Daniels didn't even live in Anadarko. She was from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And every week she traveled at least 60 miles from her home into this small town called Anadarko. So that was just a, in, just over an hour drive every week. And she was faithful with it. Um, community people said she she rarely ever missed a day, and, and she did this for years. So she was stationed there in Adarko with her church. Um, and it's also uh, something to note that the people in the community said, you know, she came every week, and there will be no congregants. But she was there just in case someone showed up to be able to preach to them, you know. Um, so that just really shows that she was a strong, faithful soldier of Christ. So she was there to minister to people that weren't even there initially. They just kind of showed up throughout the day. 
And I want to note that Anadarko, Oklahoma, is a small, rough town. And it's southwest of Oklahoma City metro area, uh, just an hour southwest. And so Anadarko was very poor. It lacked in resources, no jobs, um, a lot of drugs, a lot of violence um, and things like that, a lot of crime. Um, so her commute was very important to her. And, and that just shows the level of commitment of her faith. OK, so uh, Kara resided in Oklahoma City. And she did this every Sunday. There were no regular services. She was just eager to serve the community. Okay. She was eager to preach the word of the gospel and the Lord with the intent to save a soul and kind of reconnect with people um, and connect people to Christ and reconnect people to Christ. So on this day, uh, August 23rd, 2009, she arrived 10 a.m. as usual. So between 10 a.m. to noon, those were her hours that uh, she was there. And those are are very critical and important hours on this day because the surveillance system uh, caught her arriving around 10 a.m., which was called Stop and Fresh. It's kind of cat a corner to the church. Um, So they were able to catch her uh, pulling up. Uh, into the parking lot. She parked. She went into the uh, Christ Holy Sanctified Church around that time. So around 1140 a.m. the same day, um, a retired bishop, Bishop Silky Wilson Jr. and his wife, Julia, stopped by. They went to the front door in an attempt to visit the pastor. They knocked and they knocked. No one came to the door. They looked in the windows. They went around to the back. They checked to see if the doors were unlocked nothing which was strange because her car was there and she's normally available it's usually an open door policy and so it was very strange so around noon um an officer arrived because the retired bishop and his wife um obviously contacted um authorities uh officer arrived at the church and began assessing the situation they spoke to the wilsons um So in looking into the church, they could see that there was someone uh, behind the pulpit. So they then made entry into the church through a side door. It was at that point that they noticed Pastor Daniel was on the floor of the pulpit area. Um, And so Pastor Daniels had been stabbed multiple times. Uh, Her throat was slit close to decapitation. Her hair was set on fire. She was brutally murdered. They compared her murder and um, the way her body was laying um, to a crucifixion, to the crucifixion of Christ. Um, It was just sad. And, And to the day, officers say they've never seen anything so drastic and brutal in a, in a small crime like that. So clearly it, it just spoke, okay, someone had an issue uh, with this woman. What was the problem? What was the, what was the problem between the pastor and whomever did this? So, you know, authorities got hot on the trail. They questioned people. They asked, they were talking to suspects. And then a witness came forward in 2015 With the potential break, she was a witness to someone burning evidence uh, related to the case, allegedly. But after coming forward a few days later, that witness was then found deceased. Um, There are no details of how she died, but it is still eerie to know that this happened to this person. It hasn't been said if if her death was um, related to her coming forward as a witness. But um, two violent drug offenders at the time were also said to be uh, suspects, Uh, individual by the name of Denise, who also went by uh, the name Darnell. She was arrested and sentenced for distribution of drugs in 2012. She was on probation, sentenced 25 years probation, all that wrapped into that. Um, So she violated the terms of the probation. She was sent back to prison. 
but she was also prior to that beating uh convicted <clears throat> of battery in 2003 with a dangerous weapon so this kind of goes hand in hand so the police were kind of hot on her trail and they wanted to know if she had anything to do with this well they were hot on her trail um uh, Denise Darnell Cooper, um, who goes by the nickname just Darnell, uh, passed of cancer in 2017 before an indictment came. So suspect number two was never charged, but they are still seeking evidence and witnesses in this case. And it said that it's not a cold case. This is just a case that's not resolved. And I truly believe that, you know, because... Pastor Carol Daniels was just trying to help people in that area and in that neighborhood to help save a life, to help those that may need it to be get clean and sober, to help those that may need to be reconnected with Christ, their family, um, and to start over jobs and resources and things like that, even their fam- their kids. So I'm not sure if this may them upset to where they felt like, okay, you're coming into our neighborhood, you're turning people away from buying drugs, and uh, which is taking money out of the drug dealer's pockets. So it's just kind of strange that this type of crime happened to her. She had been there for so long. So um, very sad, a very sad case. But Pastor Carol Daniels left an impression on the community that everyone still talks about today. They appreciated her. They loved her. She was the type of woman and minister to give you the shirt off their back, off her back, literally, you know, to make sure you had what you need to survive. And if you wanted to talk, she was there to comfort you. You know, she was an amazing woman and it just shows in how people talk about her and how her children talked about her in different articles and things like that and and you know it just speaks volumes of what type of woman she was and and I can only imagine you know what her murderers and killers felt you know they couldn't they 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 murdered her but they really couldn't hurt her. They couldn't touch the surface of of even hurting her, you know, and she was a woman of God. So they should feel more ashamed than anything, because even though they took her out of this off this earth, I know she's having a fabulous time in heaven. So, yeah, this is just a really strong, um, eerie case. Um, I just want to bring it to your attention and um, let everyone know if they have any, um, you know, evidence or any um, thing they would like to bring to authorities to contact the Anadarko Police Department in Oklahoma and about the Carol Daniels case and, and, and take that information to authorities to help get this case solved. I do believe that other suspects are still alive um, that has something to do with this case. So hopefully it could be closed with um, for the family. So like, share, subscribe. Have a good rest of your day and talk to you soon. Bye.